Oh, are those actual dragon skulls? Roku? That? The, okay. I think the elements are very clear here. Just let this happen. Oh, whoa. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ben and today I'll be reacting to Avatar The Last Airbender Season 3, Episode 6. Now the last episodes, all of them have been so good. I mean, even in the sense that they are technically filler, they're still amazing. They may not have been driving the main plot forward, because the main plot is now getting to Day of Black Sun. That's the main plot. But all the episodes that they've been filled in between have been character focused and developmental. They've been amazing. We had development on Aang, Katara, Sokka, Zuko, and even Mei and Tylee, and Azula. There's been so much, so I cannot wait to see what else comes from all of this. Now, there's still so much time left in this season, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to come up with, because they've already done so much in just, a, like, this is the sixth episode. Oh, so much has been done in five episodes so far, so I cannot wait to see what they have left to give to these characters. Then, of course, the last episode had the guy, the assassin, he showed up, and he is bending power. I have no idea what it is. Unbelievably cool, and I cannot wait for that thing to show up again and just see what he does and how he does it, because just the sound design, everything about it was so cool. So I would love to see that thing show up again. As for what this episode has in store, I'm not quite sure what it can do. I feel like the only character that hasn't had a lot of focus this season so far, Toph, even though she's basically a very well-rounded out character at the minute. She doesn't really need any more development. She's the only one that just hasn't had a focused episode on her yet, so maybe it'll go on to her. Yeah, whatever they do, I know I'm gonna enjoy it. Just seeing how, so far this season, they've done so much already. I know whatever comes next will be amazing. But yeah, as always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe, it really does help the channel to grow. And if you do enjoy my content and you wanna help support the channel, I do have a Patreon, the link will be in the description. Over there, I'm uploading these videos and the full reaction a week in advance. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. With that said, let's just dive on in. Hey. It's time you learn my history with Fire Lord Susie. Okay, really, straight into whatever new thing this is. Meet me on my home island on the day of the summer solstice. Okay, okay, this is, um, okay, right into it. Okay, dreamed about it, cool. This is so interesting. No, like, the little prep into the episode, just straight in. You need to know the story of your great-grandfather's demise. You left that. Okay. Ang and Zuko mirror episode, amazing. Okay, so does that mean he's traveling? Does that mean today is the day of the summer solstice? Oh, a lot had to be done by then. An entire village, hundreds of houses, all completely buried in ash. Oh, 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 what happened there then? Just volcano, but then Roku lived there. Oh. Fire Lord Sozin began the war, of course. He spent his early years secretly preparing for it. If that is the one. Later renamed Sozin's Comet, and used its power to launch his full-scale invasion of the world. Pretty good plan. Great. And he died a very old and successful man. So you're proud of him. He died peacefully, in his sleep. He was ancient. Okay, so just old age. Now that's meant to lead on to Zuko's destiny. Ah, oh, the dragon again. Ah, oh, I love seeing Zuko. He's so cool to just come back. He's like teaching Aang all the Avatar-ish the Avatar stuff. What does it mean? Ooh, hidden message. Just keep the secret history in the Dragonbone Catacombs. Lovely name for location, Dragonbone Catacombs. So there's more to his death, so he didn't just die of old age. A hidden secret. Okay, yeah, now we've seen the airbenders have their own little mechanisms, didn't they? And the firebenders had the weird door, so this is another type of that thing. Oh, are those actual dragon skulls? Oh dear, that's so many. Okay, just uh, that lovely eyes and mouth on fire. The final testament of Fire Lord Sozin. Come, Aang. I love this mirroring. So he's le so Zuko's learning from whatever that thing is, and Aang's learning from Roku. I love how they're showing that how they're reaching out for the information. I remember my friend. Oh, nice. The fire look really hasn't changed a lot, has it? It's very still very bright. This is where we saw young Zuko. Looks like I win again, Roku. Are you kidding? The tree root did all the work. Roku? That? Nice one, Sozin. You were friends with Fire Lord Sozin? The, okay. And he was just Prince Sozin, and he was my best friend. Okay, I gotta try and figure out timelines now. The Avatar was w way more connected to the war than I realized. Love is hard when you're young. You don't have to tell me. Okay, okay still confused. The war, when did the war start? So there, if, if, if he's still a kid, they're both the same age. So, and it seems like the guy used the comet, so he must have been ancient to use the comet and Roku not intervene. Because Roku is also ancient. 
<laughs> so is Roku royalty or something? So why is he with the prince? We are not here for you. We are here to announce the identity of the next avatar. So we honor to serve you, Avatar Roku. Okay, so you didn't even know he was the avatar at this point, and yet you still kept him around. So you are just good friends then. Even bowing. Ooh. So that was the moment that he learned he was the Avatar. Roku had to leave the Fire Nation and face his destiny as the Avatar. So the war still hasn't started yet, so you have an active Avatar around the time before the war even began. What even happened there? Come on, show me how it's done using all four kinds of bending. This is the dude that started the war that's now ruining everything. This is so weird. But then the fire sages told me I won't need any worldly possessions anymore. Mm. I hope you're at least allowed to have this. Oh, but that's... This is a royal artifact. Yeah, that's symbolic. Wow. By the crown prince. I want you to have it. How close friends are you? So first you'll just hang out and have him in whatever royal possession was happening when he's not even royal or whatever was going on. It was to celebrate you. You were coming down the stairs and he was there. So that is interesting. There's crowds of people. And now you're even giving him the crown? <sighs> what? Do they have bathrooms in the spirit world? As a matter of fact, they do not. This is creepy and weird. <laughs> What's some... Why did you say him getting on the dragon? And also where I met an old friend of yours, Unc Giazzo. Oh, there's so many connections! And that's a young Giazzo! So oh, I love how everyone knows each other. Hey Giazzo, you wanna see a new glider trick? He looks like Ang too. He's air surfing. I can't believe I never thought of that. Wow. Ang's definitely gonna try that now. <laughs> Monkey Atsu looks so much like Ang. It's so cool. Some friendships are so strong, they can even transcend lifetimes. Aww. So, oh, oh, now I love this so much. So, yeah, I gotta remember the avatar is technically one person in a life cycle because they just get reborn. <laughs> Especially challenging for me. Ah, so like Ang with Earth. In time, I mastered it as well. Ah! Nice. Oh, right up the city. And he's still wearing the crown thing. The bending master said was uncompromising, stubborn, and blunt. Basically tough. <laughs> 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 Only them making tea. But the results were worth it. Awesome. I like that he's still wearing the firebender clothes. So even when the avatar gets all the elements, they still stay with their one nation. Yeah, Kyoshi still wears um, the Earth Nation stuff. That's quite cool that they still technically have that earthly connection. So they don't just come to all of it. They have their, they're grounded in their original culture. But you're the exception. Oh, so their friendship still lasts. He was still my best friend. It's gonna be painful. What happens? He was my best man. Okay. Oh, it's that girl who didn't even know you were alive. Wonderful. Avatars can get married. They can fall in love. Great. So that is an earthly connection. So Ang should hopefully have hope now. He can understand that he can be with Katara and it doesn't affect the whole Avatar ness. It doesn't hurt your chances with the ladies either. Even Roku's saying it. May I borrow him for a moment? It's not very traditional, but... Okay. I like how we're seeing like Zuko's side as well, like in the same pacing. So Sozin so is thinking about, while writing the letter, thinking about the same order Roku is talking to Anne. Right from the start, I was destined. Ooh, nice shot. Our nation is enjoying an unprecedented time of peace and wealth. Our so, people would, are happy. Wouldn't all the nations be like this at the minute because there's no war? We should share this prosperity with the rest of the world. In our hands is the most successful empire in history. Mm. It's time we expanded it. Oh, wait, so it did come from... Oh. Roku, you haven't even stopped to consider the possibilities. This, this is quite interesting. This is the last I want to hear about this. Okay, okay. So the idea of the war came from wanting to spread prosperity and goodness throughout the world and the peace that the Fire Nation has. Ah, uh, yeah, this ain't peace of prosperity. I've seen the colonies, Sosen. How dare you occupy Earth Kingdom territory? Oh, he's a they're aging. You can hear it in their voices. Your loyalty is to our nation first. Anything less makes you a traitor. Nah. Don't challenge me. It will only end badly. Wait. He actually tried to attack him? Too late. Oh, whoa. 
Oh dear, this, okay, so this dude got a bit of power and still, I feel like there's still a big jump in between wanting to spread peace and prosperity to the colonizing the Earth Nation. Oh. I'm sparing you, Sozin. I'm letting you go in the name of our past friendship. So this is why the Avatar's whole disattachment thing is so powerful, because if you did end him now, there would be no war, but you spared him because of your friendship, because of your earthly attachment, and that is what led to the war. So it's been building for a while, and you still let... You, how? What happened then? So it's still... The war still continues, and yet you're still, like, alive and pra uh, an active Avatar. Oh, the relic. <laughs> it's a volcano. Oh, it's gonna do a Pompeii, isn't it? Let's go! Can you not stop a volcano from erupting? You made one erupt as a spirit in when Ang went to the Fire Sage Temple. This is horrifying. Oh, wait, oh, oh. Can you stop it? I mean, you're kind of far away now. You're protecting them. Okay, good. Roku's island was a hundred miles away, but I could still feel it rumbling. Oh. I had never seen anything like this catastrophe. Then it's still your nation. You should hopefully you still care about your nation. Are you trying to save the island? I would leave at this point. Let it erupt. It will settle down. It's only material things. You've saved everyone. What is there left to save? Empty buildings. Okay, you blocked it well. You, that worked. Again, okay, yeah, you're doing well. You're just diverting everything. I think is are there still people on this island? I thought they all escaped on the boats. Yeah, that's saved. There was no way I could do it all. What are you? What are you? What is the goal here? See, everyone is in boats. They are away. What are you trying to stop? Just leave at this point, honestly! Battling the elements was hard enough. I had to do it while I could barely breathe. Yeah. And the volcanic gases were overwhelming. And they should probably be burning you alive. Oh, and the dragon can't get to you. Get out of here! I'm fine! Why not leave? You really don't... Ooh. Okay, diverting it away again. I th again, you've sort of done it. What is there left to deal with here? Okay, fine, let it erupt. It's not near anything. There's not a moment to waste. Yeah, there's Dragon 2. Cool, but he actually come back to help. Okay, I love the, how complex they're showing their friendship to be. But they have had, like, and they have fought in the past. The war came from, like, a good position, but Sozan's just misguided. And they're actually giving each other chances. They bickered a lot, and eventually, they've come back to helping each other. But then how does this start the war? Mm. I think the elements are very clear here. Just let this happen. Leave. Oh, for crying out loud. Ah, oh, Roku. Is this how he dies? Without you, all my plans are suddenly possible. I Don't. have a vision for the future, Roku. You're both Asian. You just wait a couple of years. <laughs> okay, Roku. It is Roku die here. This is an awful death. Alone in poisoned fog. Oh, the dragon. Oh, it went to be with him. Who's? Wait, that's that? me, isn't it? Oh, it was instant! Make sense of our past, and you will bring peace and restore balance in the world. See, so, so you really do have to understand how the war started to try and end it. I knew the next Avatar would be born an air nomad, so I wiped out the air temples. Oh yeah, trying to kill it. I wasted the remainder of my life searching in vain. Relating to Zuko. Nation's greatest threat, the last airbender. And he was hidden under the ships the entire time. That can't be it. Where's the rest of it? Who left you the note to begin with? I'm still hung up on that. It can't be Iroh, he's locked up. Should be renamed the history most people already know. The note said that I needed to know about my great-grandfather's death. Maybe it's meant to know about your, the, his relationship with the Avatar. You have more than one great-grandfather, Prince Zuko. Mother's grandfather was Avatar Roku. 
Oh, whoa! Because understanding the struggle between your two great... You're actually talking to him as well. ...can help you better understand the battle within yourself. Okay, everything is so tied up. Aang's past... Roku is Zuko's great-grandfather. What happened generations ago can be resolved now by you. It really has cemented that Zuko's light and dark side, doesn't it? It's confusion. It's not just his family past and Iroh's sort of... and Iroh's good influence, but also that in the past, he is related to an avatar. It's a royal artifact. It's supposed to be worn by the crown prince. Where'd you get that? Okay, so it was Iroh that did it. You have your ways. That's pretty cool that you have all those ways inside a prison cell. Even after Roku showed him mercy, Sozin betrayed him like that? It's like these people are born bad. Mm. I don't think that was the point of what Roku showed me at all. Excellent, think it though. Roku was just as much Fire Nation as Sozin was, right? Their story proves anyone's capable of great good and great evil. Yeah. Even the Fire Lord and the Fire Nation have to be treated like they're worth giving a chance. I'm saying a big emphasis was on the fact that the Avatar and the Fire Lord have, is that relationship. You have an incredible relationship between Zuko, who is heir to the Fire Nation. Well, scientifically speaking, there's no way to prove that. Oh, Sokka, just hold hands. <laughs> oh yeah. Your relationships will last lifetimes. Okay, that was really interesting. Wow. That was a lot of information in 20 minutes. So that, that basically explains how the war began and how complicated it all was. So Sozin was waiting on that plan for years. On, he, he told Roku on Roku's wedding day, and he must have been pretty young then, it was after his avatar training. Then he only got the chance to start the war when Roku died. So Roku got to live a full life. And while he knew about Sozin's plan, and Sozin all that time was waiting for it. And he's never let go of that idea. I also love the sort of complexity of where the war began. It started off as like coming from a good spot. He, Sozin had a successful empire. People seemed happy. You had prosperity and peace. That is a very lovely thing. But it also, I'm, I don't know, but wouldn't the rest of the world also be experiencing that as well since there is no war at the minute? Unless, I mean, I kind of feel like it would come from a better point if the rest of the war world was at war, maybe civil wars or something going on, and so Sozin thought by spreading the empire he could help stop that. So either it's kind of a good thing that he wants to help people and sort of spread peace by stopping conflicts, or he thinks that, or it's kind of, it kind of disproves that he's coming from a nice spot. If everything's already at peace and he just wants to conquer everything anyway, it's not nice to begin with. But yeah, Roku, I love that we got to see basically all of Roku's life seeing him be actually friends with the Prince of the Fire Nation and be that close with them. That's just weird in itself because he would have been thought of as a regular normal person, yet he's just really good friends with the Prince and was able to stand side by side. And of course, him, the Avatar, stepping away from them all, but I love how he still stayed true to the Fire Nation roots because we've seen that with Kyoshi as well. She stayed, kept with her. And uh, Kyoshi, I think I got confused here because Kyoshi stays in her Kyoshi uniform. That was her warrior from Kyoshi Island. That was, it's not technically, it, technically it's Earth Nation attire, but it's also something else on top of it. It's not just Earth looking nation. It's a specific uniform. The Fire Nation, Roku basically just stays dressed in the reds and stuff. It isn't separated for, for the Avatar. They don't dress differently when they're outside, when they're master and they're technically outside of it all. They still ground themselves within their original nation. I think this episode also went to show that Roku definitely had a lot of issues with attachment. Seeing that he, I get, it seemed like he was attached to his island. That's the whole thing. Cause I feel like he should have just left that alone. It's a volcano. It's not something you can really stop. And uh, technically he had a volcano, but he let it erupt. He moved it away. He didn't really stop it. He bent the stuff around it. The people worked together. And it was in the fortune teller episode. They dealt with an exploding volcano and they didn't try and fight it that much, but it worked. Roku, I feel like everyone was safe. They got people off the boat, off onto the boat to leave. They were safe, they were fine. I don't think anyone was left on the volcano. If they were, they didn't show it. So it seemed like he was just fighting a volcano for the sake of it. And that must have stemmed from an attachment to that being his home. And of course you have him being attached with his friendship with Sozin, because if he had killed him at sort of the colonizing of the earth kingdom, there would have been no war. And I think Roku probably eats himself up thinking about that because he's got to regret not doing that then. If he had stepped in at that point and actually killed his friend and not let it continue, there would be no war. That is so like weird to think about. But yeah, and then Zuko, so, I mean, it's, like, it's so cool that basically Aang was watching his past life's life, yet Zuko was basically hearing the story 
of his two great grandparents. One being Fire Lord Sozin, who started this crazy war, and the other being the Avatar. Does that technically mean Aang is Zuko's grand great grandfather? I know the whole different identities being rebirth cycles, but technically Roku and Aang are the same person with if they are being reborn. They just lack their memories. Yes, I think memories take make a lot of who a person is, but it's still technically Roku. So Aang is Technically, Zuko's great-grandfather. But I do love that it's also given another layer to Zuko's whole identity crisis, because he's always been conflicted about what's good, what's right. That also means Azula is, oh dear. That means Aang is technically also kind of spiritually related to Azula. And there's no, is there any good inside of her? We've kind of seen a bit of it with the lack of love, but that's also concerning. It personifies it so well. His, grand, his great-grandfather was very evil and started the war, and his other great-grandfather was the Avatar who tried to stop it. It's that huge battle between Avatar and Fire Lord that is now affecting Zuko and his mental, his morality, his state of mind. And technically, yeah, that's still going on, it's the, between the Avatar and the Fire Lord. Yeah, the whole point of this one was to basically learn from the past so you can stop it. I feel like the emphasis was on Avatar and Fire Lord. It's like that relationship that caused the whole thing. Aang has no relationship to Ozai whatsoever, and I think he's, he's just needs to be defeated. The next Fire Lord, Aang needs to get in a much better relationship with. Zuko. This could, this could be such a good hint to maybe Zuko turning good and something coming from that. I really want him to turn good and be redeemed. And if they, because yeah, they do have a relationship. It is basically very similar to, Ru not very really similar to Ruku and I, there's so many names. Roku and, oh, not Ozai, Sozin. Roku and Sozin, their relationship is very different to Aang and Zuko's. Aang and Zuko, basically, they're not friends. They've been at war with each other for ages. But Aang has always kind of wanted to be Zuko's friend. I remember the episode of with the Blue Spirit first showing up. Um, Aang would basically... I'm sure that was when Aang said that if they were born... If they were in another lifetime, would they have been friends? That links to this so much. In another life, they were... No, no, because Zuko hasn't changed lifetimes. But technically, it kind of links with Gyatso. So... Ruku was friends with Zuko's great-grandfather. Now Aang has wants technically to be friends with Zuko. There's that kind of relationship. It's that because yeah, Aang moves through lifetimes and I technically Sozin or Fire and that moves through Fire Lord stuff. So maybe if Zuko becomes Fire Lord, I mean I kind of want him to, but I want him to turn good. I can't imagine Azula being Fire Lord, but then again, you might just get rid of fire, the whole Fire Lord thing entirely. But it's clear from this that the whole reason the war started was because of the bad relationship between the Fire Lord and the Avatar. So to fix it, you need a good relationship between the Fire Lord and the Avatar. That's how you mend the war. But right now, I don't see that happening with Ozai or Azula if she becomes Fire Lord. So it has to be Zuko. This is setting up Zuko's destiny. It's, do it's doing it so well. Okay, once again, episode was absolutely phenomenal. And again, it's sort of, it's in the realm of the filler episodes because it's not, it's not advancing the main plot. This is dealing with the past and it's something so important. They gave a whole episode to showing you how the war began and teaching the main characters how to stop it and how to actually fix it. So not just end the war entirely, but how to make a better future by showing how it led to this point. So not just some evil guy decided to declare all out war. Now when you stop it, they're still <laughs> now when you stop it you still have to make sure the world is in a good spot so nothing else bad happens but yeah seeing roku's story was absolutely amazing his death that stuck with me it's so beautiful and kind of, it's just sad i mean it definitely goes to show how attached he is to the world he had his whole thing with sparing his friend which yes that was kind of nice but it was still attachment if it was disattachment he would have killed sozin for colonizing the Earth Kingdom and sort of blowing the lines between the elemental nations. So that's definitely an attachment. And then the island, pe the people on the boats, they were safe. He could have let the volcano explode and blow up, whatever, and he could have stepped away. He could have lived. He chose to stay there, try and fight the volcano to save build empty buildings and the land, his home, the place that he calls home. That's attachment. That's the kind of thing that Aang shouldn't do. And it's kind of good that all his places are kind of gone. So he's not exactly... He can't fight to protect them if they are under attack. It's the same thing we saw with Aang's... It's the episode where we saw the refugees came and inhabited the air temples. It's that. They were getting destroyed and of course Aang is attached to it because it's his home. But as an avatar you have to be 
disattached from that sort of thing. But yeah, him dying all alone in like um, poison gas. I love that the dragon came, what was it, a fang? I'm probably, I think it was fang. He came and so just stayed with him. And so they died together and that's really sweet. The dragon thing, that's quite cool that there's like, we've seen two dragons now. We've seen Roku's and Fire, the Fire Lord Sozin's. Cause yeah, the only time we've seen, uh, seen the dragon before was in the spirit realm with Aang and Heibai. That was the only time we've um, seen the dragon. Then, of course, you have the dragon bones in the catacombs beneath the Fire Nation. That's lovely. So, I wonder what happened to the dragons then, huh? But yeah, So's an absolutely very interesting character. Seeing how the war began from his perspective, he wanted to spread peace and prosperity. He saw his nation was doing very well. It, I would kind of want to know what kind of person came before him. Who was his father like? Because we've seen Ozai and what that does to his children. So, I'm wondering what the, like, the ancestry of the Fire Lords are like. Because we've seen... His, have we, yeah, we've seen Sozin's son, Azulon, who Azula was named after. He was, I think, killed by Ursa or that whole thing, because that was how she disappeared. So there's that whole mess of stuff. And he seemed dreadful. Now he wanted Ozai to kill Zuko. So there's a whole history of bad fathers in this family. So what was this guy's parents like? Because Sozin, he seemed to start off good. He was friends with, technically, a commoner before he became the Avatar, and he was allowed to be stand by the prince's side. That's a big thing. And the nation was at peace and prospering. Awesome. But then you saw the darkness creep in for Sozin, but we didn't really see what caused that darkness. He had this plan, he had ambition, but he wanted to spread it. That in itself isn't that bad. You can still share resources, you can spread goodness throughout the world, you can help fight conflicts. But to tr go and colonize nations, that's a whole different step. The Earth Nation is its own thing. It has its own people. It, it didn't seem like anything bad was going on that he needed to step in to help stop. So what was the motivation there? Did it actually come from a good place where he wanted to spread the peace and prosperity of his land and sort of help the world that wasn't at that? Because to say, yeah, to try and spread peace and prosperity, we have to imply that the space where the Fire Nation isn't isn't experiencing peace and prosperity, yet the war isn't happening, and I guess we don't know what's actually going on in the other nations, but I'd assume there's going to be a lot more peaceful than what's currently going on with the war. So yeah, I think I definitely want to get a deeper dive into what is in Sozin's psyche. Like, did he actually believe he was doing good, or is it misguided? Yeah, is it misguided good? Were the other nations uh, at peace, meaning his peace became redundant when he tried to spread it? But yeah, then of course we got to see the evil take hold, and him let his best friend die. So I loved how they showed sort of the relationship there, seeing how they were best friends for a long time. Roku spared his life, and then when it came when it came time for Sozin to return the favor, he didn't do it, and he let Roku die. He let the Avatar, the bridge between all of the stuff in the world, die. Now it makes me wonder, like, at what point did he start? Did it makes me wonder what what point did he decide to let Roku die? Because he came there to help. Unless maybe he saw the explosion and maybe hoped that Roku got caught into it, so he went and saw that he was still alive and bought his time to wait for him to die. Or did he, was he still, like when, um, I mean it must have been since when he got his life spared. Or at the wedding. That's when he wanted the plan to work, uh, the war, the, to spread his ideals. So from that point on, He's been looking up ways to get rid of Roku. Probably Roku sparing his life didn't do it help at all. Probably made it embarrass him, probably made him hate Roku. Then the volcano was his perfect chance. So he probably didn't come there to help, but actually came there to use it as an opportunity to actually finally get rid of him. There's probably no goodness in him left at that point. But yeah, now looking at Aang's side of this story. So Roku told, I feel like this is much more impactful for Zuko, but seeing Roku talk about this to Aang. That's why I want to try and figure out what Aang is meant to learn from this. And it's Aang's responsibility to end the war and bring peace back to the world. That is his whole thing. He needs to bring back balance. Now that he's learned how the war began, he needs to realize how to stop it and how to make sure it stays stopped. And it basically began because of the bad relationship between Roku and Sozin. If they had a better relationship, maybe Sozin probably would have saved Roku. Maybe he would have put his plans on hold, saved Roku, and he could have died peacefully and the war could have never started. That could have been something. But Roku, being the Avatar, has to stay distant. So it's kind of saying that the attachment was, or well, the disattachment was the issue. If Roku was more attached and paid more attention to his friendship, maybe that could have prevented the war. Because then, because then Sozin wouldn't have been able to let Roku die. He would have had to save him because of their friendship. But it got so weak because of Roku's disattachment 
that he let Roku die. Yeah, it's very clear that the, di the whole issue is the relationship between the Avatar and the Fire Lord. So I'm hoping this has got to mean stuff for Aang when he comes to dealing with the Fire Lord, whatever's going on there. There's no relationship between him and Ozai, so that can't... I don't... It feels like it's too late to build something there. There's nothing really impactful for Aang to build off at that point. As I feel like Ozai basically just needs... I feel like Ozai just needs to be, like, cut off because we've seen Zulon and how evil he is. Ozai... He's like the big bad behind everything. He just, we've seen we've seen nothing but evil from him, so I feel like he just needs to be offed. That leaves us the Fire Lord position open. Azula, I feel like he's gunning for it. Zuko feels almost it's iffy where he is. I feel like he could be that spot, but also maybe go away from it and find a better life somewhere else. But Aang needs to sort out the relationship between the Avatar and the Fire Lord to mend the world and bring back balance. That's what needs to happen. He's got good relationships with the rulers of all the other nations. F Water, yeah, we got that. Earth, done. Ruler of the Fire Nation, not so great. That's what needs to solve, and that's what will help stop the war and stop it from ever happening again. Yeah, Zuko's side of this whole story, much more impactful in the sense it's dealing with his whole not being confused, not knowing what is right and what is wrong, and it personified it in such an amazing way, showing that he has two great-grandfathers, one who he knew about being the being the sort of legendary warrior that started the war that Azula seemed very proud of, and one being the Avatar. It feels very like destined and fate and very just weird and coincidental. Because you have Roku and Sozai being friends, now you have Zuko being the descendant of both of them. Yes, yeah, so that means Ursa would have been the descendant of Roku. I'm trying to figure out, like, so. Where Azulon, they, Roku's child then had Azula, no, wait, Roku's child then had Ursa, then had Zuko and Azula. Because yeah, it feels weird that Azula is also mixed in there. She's also the descendant of an avatar. That, there's nothing has passed down that line, has it? Because yeah, Zuko's gotten all the goodness, which has kind of helped combat all the badness that's on his father's side. But yeah, it's definitely put such an interesting idea of what's going on in his head. Because now, oh, this actually, worked, this is actually amazing for Zuko. All this time, he's been thinking of how he needs to uphold his legacy and be just like the father, his father, and just like the fa his father before him. That's the legacy that he had thought he had to follow down. That sort of line of Fire Nation, where he comes from. Now he knows he also comes from the Avatar. So I really want him to turn good. This is like the perfect opportunity for him to actually turn good and see what the fire... Because now he actually... Using the same logic that's always been used on him about following his destiny, being part of the Fire Nation, be having honour... All of that has been used to justify where he is. Now he can use that back at them and say that he's, his line is also from the Avatar. It gives him an out. Tenley also gives Azula one, but I doubt she would take that sort of thing. But it gives him such a clear opening to sort of... It helps him so much because his whole thing is defined by his family. Now his family is also the Avatar. I really hope he finds good. I want him to turn good. Yeah, pretty interested in what's happening with Iroh. So he's actually talking to Zuko. He hasn't given up trying to sort of tell himself. So he's been waiting on telling him this for so long now. All that time where Zuko was trying to kill Aang, Iroh was holding on to the information that that was technically your great-grandfather that you're trying to kill. That is interesting that it's only now he's decided to voice that. But it also shows that Iroh kind of has some leeway on some power, even in prison. He had the crown. I'm calling it a crown. I know there's probably a better name for it. I'll try and look it up. But he had that hidden in his cell, which is impressive. So he must have managed to... I doubt that was there when he got there. So he must have got on a, on a guard's good side, had them go and retrieve the crown, have it brought back to him, and then he hid it in his cell. That's insane. But he also managed to get a guard to hide or leave a message for Zuko and deal with that whole thing and add a secret message to this thing. So Iroh still has quite a bit of power, even though he's in prison. But yeah, the relationships and ties in this episode were definitely the very focal point and most important part that you're meant to take away from it. So you have Roku and Sozin being best friends. You have Aang and Zuko basically being m mortal enemies, even though Aang has tried to reach out in the past. You have Zuko, who now has a connection between the past Avatar and, of course, Sozin, and him being a direct descendant of both of them. And then Aang technically being also that person in the weirdest kind of way. And I also love how they, they showed... I feel like the Gyatso thing is much more important than just a gag and showing that, oh, it's a nice tie, it's a cameo. But, like, it's much more important. It shows that the relationships pass on through lifetimes. Roku became friends with Gyatso, 
Gyatsu basically raised Aang, who is technically also Ruku, and now that's got to play into how Zuko responds to all this, how all of their lives are so meddled up between each other. Yeah, I also think the ending was also quite sweet, just seeing like the Avatar gang saying that their friendships will last lifetimes, which I hope it does, because I know there is a show set after this with I think the next Avatar, I think it's like the water stuff, because that's the cycle. So I hope that sort of their friendships can last through that as well. Because like, I feel, I feel, it feels weird that only the Avatar gets reborn, or all of all the others basically just stop existing. Is that it? Is that is there a is there an afterlife in this? Was that only for the Avatars? Because it feels quite mean that Ang or the Avatar themselves, Ang and all his past lives have to keep going on and on and on, and all their loved ones get sort of they disappear they cease existing and cease existing but if it doesn't mean that they sort of their friendships continue through lifetimes that is quite sweet even if they don't follow them directly now i also just want to look at the position of fire lord because i feel like that is something very important that's like yeah the fire lord is become as important as the avatar in terms of story and their positions in this story. This episode made it clear that that relationship is what started the war and what can end it. So it's that relationship that needs to happen. Right now, the only person close to the position of Fire Lord that has an actual relationship with Aang would be Zuko. Azula's relationship with him is that she tried to kill him and she thinks she killed him. That's it. And Ozai has no relationship with him whatsoever. He doesn't even have a relationship with Roku. So that, it makes me think that uh, it makes you think Ozai isn't long for the Fire Lord position. It almost makes me think that he will get pushed out by Azula. That is my current theory. I think she will knock him off. Because we know he's been the big bad. He's been working in the shadows. He's kind of the whole idea of the evil in the show. Yeah, he has, we haven't really gotten anything on him. We've gotten very... We've seen his actions through Azula, Azula and Zuko. We've seen him like once and heard him speak a few times. But other than that, his presence, his presence is still impactful. But I feel like... It's still missing something in terms of having a grand final that will bring an end to the war. I feel like that will either be Azula or Zuko. Because yeah, Ozai's definitely not the person that needs a relationship with Aang. It's the children. Azula lost cause. She's that I don't see her becoming good anytime soon. I feel like there may be a little bit of hope with how it showed that she is longing for some kind of love in the last episode. But then Zuko, he's the one that you got most hope with trying to get a relationship for it with. And he has the connection to Fire Lord, where he needs to be, I guess he needs to be Fire Lord, and then have a good relationship with Aang to mend the broken stuff that will end the war completely. But that leaves Ozai and Azula's sort of situations up in the air. But yeah, current theory, Azula will overthrow Ozai, she'll kick him off and she'll become the big bad. I feel like that was set up for a while, she's doing all this manipulation. She's also lying to Ozai with how she's hiding the fact that Aang might be alive to mess with Zuko. So there's a lot going on with her. With how, with how also she treats her father, because it's not just clear adoration and she shares everything with him. She keeps secrets from him too. So that makes me think that she will come out on top in a way. But I think this episode set up a, the most clearest picture for me of where this show can go, and like what it has to do to end the war, because it can't be as simple as overthrowing the Fire Lord, because you have to deal with the actual nation, that they could be loyal to him, that means that, that I mean, they could just replace him with someone even worse or like him because they just like the idea of him. That wouldn't be good and that would still make the world a mess. So not only do you have to stop Ozai's war and his command, but you also have to mend the actual relationships with people. And this episode showed that the most important relationship that needs to be mended is between the Avatar and the Fire Lord, which gives very clear indications of like what Aang must, I guess, try to do now. For if he's learned anything from that lesson, he's going to try reaching out to someone connected to the Fire Lord and try and build a relationship there. Technically, Iroh could fit. I feel like Iroh has a good relationship with Aang. That could end also end the war. But yeah, Azula, there's never going to be a good relationship between Azula and Aang. Ozai, doubt it. Zuko, that is the one that I feel like you could get a good relationship from. And for that to happen, that means he could be redeemed. I really want him to be redeemed. I hope it happens soon. He's been struggling and suffering for so long. I'd love it if he finally turns good or like even if he just leaves and has a good life somewhere. That's all I want. I want him to be happy and have just be good and not and not evil. And this episode has given me so much hope for that because it's dem it just perfectly showed that the relationship that will actually end all of this and actually save the world is between currently Aang and whoever will be Fire Lord. If it's Ozai, don't see it. Azula, not gonna happen. Zuko, that's the most promising one. But yeah, with that said, that does bring me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one for season three, episode seven. 
See ya.